Let's go, boys. FIFA 22 is out. Got my Starbucks. I'm ready to go. Let's do this thing. I'm going to show you guys my settings for the start of FIFA 22, uh, what I'm going to be rocking. So we're going to go into these settings and then click Customize Controls where we can edit the controller settings. Um, and luckily this year, they added a competitive master switch. So you're going to want to have this on because when you get into like online games like an Ultimate Team or Pro Clubs, it's going to automatically turn all this stuff on. So you might as well have it on in the first place like if you're playing like offline game modes and stuff like that. Because what that'll do is turn off the all, basically all the cheap stuff, I guess you could say. Um, turns off agile dribbling, auto clearances, um, auto flare passes, auto shots, assisted headers. You can still do the agile dribbling, but it like I guess it turns off the automatic contextual agile dribbling. It does for your guy in certain situations. So now you'll have to like press the RB or the R1 on PlayStation to do the agile dribbling manually yourself. Um, and then kind of does the same thing with auto clearances, flare passes, shots, makes assisted headers, turns assisted headers off, which is what you want anyways, makes your headers a lot more accurate. It's like where you're actually pointing. I had that off all last year. Jockey on manual, and then through ball pass assistance, it makes you have semi inset of um, automatic. And then tactical defending, they usually have that. You always have to be on tactical defending when you're playing multiplayer. So onto the rest of the settings, a lot of these can be preference. So some of y'all might not want the exact same settings that I'm going to have, but I'm going to have the FIFA trainer off. I don't need it. Feel free if you want it, at least for the start of FIFA, but then I'd recommend taking it off. For time finishing, I've never used time finishing before, so I'm not going to have it on. But if you're a beast at it and you have experience with it, go for it. Um, but I notice a lot of people like don't even use the time finishing, but they have the setting on and then sometimes it'll just mess them up because they're spam and B in situations like panic situations where they're just trying to get a shot off where it's really crowded and they're spam and B, um, and it messes up their shot because they don't even realize they have time finishing on, um, and then they red time it. So I'm going to have that off. If you're not, if you don't use time finishing at all, definitely take that off. Um, next player switch indicator. That's the little arrow with the gray outline i think um at least on fifa 21 that's what it looks like it shows like basically the next player you're going to switch to i didn't like that it messed me up so i never had that on so i'm going to have that off again but i know a lot of people had it on so feel free if you like that setting keep it on uh pass block assistance now you're going to want that on it just helps you out with interceptions the ai will automatically do the interceptions for you you don't have to do it all completely manually um uh, yeah you're definitely going to want that on it'll help you out and you can still do like you can still block passes manually but it'll just help you out in situations where you're not ready to like intercept and in intercept balls manually um it'll do it automatically for you auto switching um I had manual. I don't like it when it switches for me, even on through balls or air balls. Uh, I know a lot of people have it on loose balls or only on air balls and stuff like that. Um, I just like it completely manual. That's just a preference for me. Auto switch moving assistance. You're going to want that on low because when you, I believe this is when you switch to a player, it'll kind of keep that player running in that direction for a little bit when, once you switch to them. Uh, but if you have it off or none, You'll switch to that player, and then wherever you're pointing with the stick at the time, your player will move that way. So this just kind of eliminates a little bit of error in that situation. So I have it on low. Um, I wouldn't really recommend high. Um, definitely just keep it on low if you're going to have it on. Clearance assistance, I believe, is a new setting this year in FIFA 22. It used to always just be like the classic setting. Clearance, clearances, direction, and power are fully assisted and do not take into consideration the user directional input. Like I'm pretty sure the clearance button is just B or circle on PlayStation. Um, and it would just clear it for you. Even if you were like pointing a certain direction, it wouldn't listen to where you're pointing on the stick. If you press B to clear it, it would just clear it. It would just get it out of there. Um, but now this is a new setting, which is a lot better. They needed this. Um, it's called directional. So now I guess if you're pressing B to clear it out, you, it'll actually take into account like where you're pointing with your left stick on your controller. So you have to be wary when you're clearing it out. It'll actually, um, your stick, wherever you're pointing, the ball will actually go in that direction, which is good. It'll help for like counterattacks um, and just clearing the ball out and actually keeping the ball. Because a lot of times 
you play really good defense, clear the ball out out or whatever, whatever, um, and it just ends up going to the other team like multiple times in a row, and they end up scoring a goal because you give them like fifty chances to score. Maybe this will help a little bit when just clearing the balls out of the box, and hopefully you can find like an attacker waiting um, to receive it. So I really like that setting, that addition. Now we're on to player lock, which is the thing where you can click the left stick and right stick down and then switch with the right stick you flick to which player you want to switch to and make a run off the ball with that player. So um, I use that sometimes, not very much. Maybe I'll use it more this year because it was a new setting last year, I believe. Um, so I'm going to keep that on. Icon switching. Enable switching icons to be displayed when pressing right stick. What does that even mean? Enable switching icons to be displayed when pressing right stick. I honestly have no clue what that means. That might be a new setting. I really don't know. I'm going to keep it on. Uh, let me know if anybody in the comments, if y'all know what that does, please let me know because uh, I have no clue. Right stick switching. I've always used player relative. Ball relative is a little bit difficult to get used to. And then player rotation, I think that's new, but you're definitely not going to want to use that. Um, I'd recommend going with player relative. Uh, round pass assistance, that's going to be assisted for sure. Shot assistance, assisted. Cross assistance, I've always used semi, so I'm going to use semi this year as well and try it out. You have a little bit more control on where those crosses are going. Um, I know a lot of people use assisted, but semi was really good last year. So I'm going to try it out this year. Law pass assistance, assisted, save assistance. That's semi if you ever want to be a goalie, I guess. With the analog sprint, I have that on. Last year, I kept it off. Um, when you have it off uh, and you push down on the right trigger, your guy will basically just go into a full sprint immediately. But when you have it on, you kind of it kind of has like a gas pedal effect. Um, if you only have your right trigger pushed down a little bit, your guy will kind of be going at like 50% speed. So you can kind of have some control of your guy's speed in like certain situations, like tight situations when you're dribbling. Luckily for me, I have the Xbox Elite Controller and I can go into the Xbox Accessories app and like tweak the triggers, like how much I need to actually push it down for it to fully notice that I'm in a full sprint. So I have mine at like 70% instead of like the full 100%. So I don't have to push the trigger down as much to get into my full sprint. But it still has that bit of a gas pedal effect because I still have this setting on. Um, I just don't have to push the trigger down as much. I also use paddles and I will talk about that in a little bit. Um, I'll talk about the setup I have with my two paddles on my controller. And for the last setting on the controller settings, it's the pass receiver lock. You're going to want this on late. So say you're in a situation where you have an option to play a guy in a through ball and it looks like it's wide open and you're playing wide to play the through ball, but defenders are running there and covering and filling the gap and the ball's not going to be on, but you've already pressed Y and your guy's about to make the pass, but you want to make, you want to change the direction of the pass and pass it to somebody else like last second. If you point the left stick to somebody else like before your guy actually passes the ball and you have the setting on late, your guy will change his decision on where he's going to pass the ball like last second. Um, but if you have it on early, you don't have that luxury as much. And this also works with shooting. Say you're wanting to go um, back post upper 90, but they shift the keeper and the, the keeper has it covered. Um, if your guy hasn't shot the ball yet, if you have it on the late setting, you could switch it to first post your aim. And most likely it'll switch your guy's shooting target to that first post if you do it in time. Uh, before your guy actually shoots the ball. Basically, you just don't want it early because you can't make that last second change of where you want to shoot or pass the ball um, if that space ends up getting covered or you know that pass isn't going to work or that shot's not going to work back post and you just want to switch it last second to the first post. Um, you're going to need this setting on late if you want to do that. So I would highly recommend, recommend having it on late. Um, and that's going to wrap up the controller settings. I don't think there's anything else we can do on here. I just use the classic settings, by the way, too. I'm on the Xbox Accessories app right now, and I kind of just want to show you guys my FIFA settings that I have going on, and basically what I was using all of last year, and then kind of just explain to you guys what I've been doing with the paddles. I know a lot of y'all might have controllers that you can put paddles on. Um, this The Elite Controller allows you to have four paddles, but I only use two for FIFA. Um, basically, the whole idea of it, as you guys can see right here, 
if you look at the controller on the screen. Um, I just have the left paddle set to LB, the left bumper, and then the right paddle set to the right bumper. So what this allows me to do is like, you can do chip shots, finesse shots. There's a bunch of other functions that the LBRB, you need the LBRB for, like LB uh, lofted through balls, um, driven cross. You need the LB and RB for a lot of stuff. For skills, it helps me pull off skills faster. You need a lot. There's a lot of skills that require pressing LB and RB. Um, so that helps doing dummies. Um, there's just a bunch of stuff you could use the LBRB for. I'd suggest giving it a try if you have a controller with pedals. And then for some of y'all that may have an Elite controller, I'll just go into my actual settings um, real quick. So like I said, I have the LBRB as my pedals. And then for the left stick, I put it on instant. I think I just kept it how it is for the curve adjustment. Um, yeah, just have it on instant, I guess. I actually have both on instant just because it's more responsive. I think it's really good for FIFA. I wouldn't have it for like shooter games or anything like that. This is just solely for FIFA. I have it on instant for both sticks. And then the left trigger and right trigger is kind of what I was talking about. For the left trigger, I have it on 10, so I barely have to press down the trigger for it to fully read it, um, which is good for the left trigger just because there's nothing you need to do to kind of use it as like a gas pedal like this right trigger. And like I was saying with the 70% for the right trigger, I have it at 70%. Um, just so I don't have to fully press down, as you guys can see, I don't have to fully press down for it to fully trigger the full sprint. So that's what I have going on with the triggers. And to do that, if you want, you're just going to make sure you go down here and adjust it to what you want. So that's what I have for my Elite Controller settings. Stay tuned for a lot of content this year. Bunch of Pro Clubs content I'm going to pump out. Try and get maxed out as soon as possible so I can get some builds pumping out for you guys and some just Pro Club tips in general. And then same with Volta. I want to grind both of those and get some content out for you guys. So stay tuned. Um, make sure you all hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys later. Have a great day. Peace out.